The Hero Two Doors Down by Sharon Robinson, Chapter 9 By early Monday morning, the snowstorm had finally slowed, leaving the usually bustling city stilled under mountains of white powder. Only a few cars, taxis, and buses braved the elements to crawl up newly plowed streets narrowed by rows of trapped cars. Despite the snowstorm, school was not closed. From my bedroom window, I could see kids bursting out of apartment buildings and low-rise brick houses, intent on adventure as they walked to school. Once class let out, the real fun began. Dressed in layers of flannel and wool, I met Sena outside my house. We set out dragging our sleds to a patch of open, hilly property. Be careful, my mother yelled down to us from the top landing of our front stoop. The roads are barely plowed. Cars will be slipping and sliding with drivers who think they're in control but aren't. We'll be fine, Mom, I yelled back. Keep your eyes alert to icy patches. Sena and I proceeded up Tilden Avenue past our school and onward. For a while, we pretended not to be cold. Instead, I kept telling myself that we were on an adventure. I can barely feel my fingertips, Sena complained. We were just two blocks from my house. Put your free hand inside your coat pocket, I suggested. Can't, she said. How come? Because I need both hands to pull this sled, Sena told me. It's heavy, Steve. I felt sorry for Sena. She was about my height, but thinner. I wasn't big enough to pull two sleds. Three more blocks, Sena. Surely you can make that. I peeked over at her, hoping she'd rally to the challenge. Didn't say I changed my mind, she muttered. Finally, we reached our destination. It was a neighborhood winter wonderland. The hills were packed with kids sledding. Laughter and screams pierced the snowy calm. Snowballs were being hurled from every direction. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught Sena smiling and thought she was up to something. I dropped my sled and turned away from her, looking for a good spot to sled. A ball of wet, cold snow splattered against my jacket. I felt the sting against my left shoulder and turned back to Sena. Grabbing a wad of snow, I hurled it at her. Sena stood straight in defiance, daring me to hit her again. Game on, we screamed at the same time. We battled, laughing so hard we were weak from struggle. After a good twenty rounds, I quit. With soggy woolen mittens and frozen fingers, I surrendered. Sena and I climbed up the less crowded side of the hill, hopped on our sleds and sped down, screaming as if wolves were chasing us. This uphill, downhill play continued until we could no longer feel our fingers or toes. I made it back home in time to see Jackie shoveling his front steps. I stopped to chat. Hey, Steve, where have you been? Sledding, I told him. At the 47th Street Park? No, my friend Sena and I went to an area with lots of hills. The place was packed with kids, I explained. We had so much fun. I've never gone sledding, Jackie mused. It must be fun. I'll put that on my list for Jackie and me to do when he's older. Sure is cold today, I said, shivering. In Southern California, where I grew up, it didn't get this cold. Really? I responded in surprise. What happens in winter, then? Jackie chuckled. Guess California doesn't have much of a winter. Not like the East Coast, anyway. It's mostly warm year-round. If the temperature drops down to the 50s or 60s, we wear a light jacket. About this time of year, I'd be on the golf course, not shoveling snow. But since I plan to play baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers a long time, I better get used to this cold weather. Jackie finished clearing the last two steps. Want to come in and have some hot chocolate? I better get home now, I told him. Do you have family coming over this weekend? A bunch. That'll be nice. We don't have much family here. Maybe you can come by on Thursday. We'll be decorating for the holiday, and it'll be more fun for Jackie if you're there. Would you like that? Would I? Great, but get your parents permission. Come over around one. We'll send you back home by three. 
On Thursday, I carried my L-17 model plane with me to the Robinsons. Rachel opened the door and wrapped her arms around me. Come on in quickly and warm up. Jack and Jackie Jr. are in the living room decorating our tree. I made this plane, I said, holding it up so Rachel could get a good view. Wow, she said, that is incredible. Is it a replica of a plane used during World War II? Sure is, I replied. How'd you know? Oh, I worked on warplanes as a riveter. What's a riveter? I asked. It was a name given to women who worked in American factories during World War II, Rachel explained. A rivet is a metal pin. They were hammered into the warplanes to hold pieces of the plane together. It was my job to stand inside the plane while the metal bolts were hammered from the outside through the holes on the inside. I'd yell to the person outside the plane to let them know that the bolt was coming through the hole. The war was far away and women couldn't fight. We wanted to help out, and it sure felt good when we did. That is so cool, I said. How's your mother, Steve? She's getting ready for our big family dinner Sunday, I replied. I'll bet she is, Rachel said. Go on into the living room and see if you can help my husband. Between the lights and little Jackie, he's got his hands full. I'm headed into the kitchen to make a snack. Are you hungry? Not really, I replied. How about some hot chocolate? Yes, please. When I walked into the living room, my mouth dropped open. Jackie was standing on a ladder next to a giant tree. I'd never seen a tree inside anyone's house. Evie, Jackie Jr. screamed when he saw me. I lifted my little friend into the air, swung him around, and set him back on the floor. He was just beginning to say words we could understand. Hi, Jackie, I called up. Glad you made it, Steve. I moved in closer to the evergreen tree. It smelled like the woods and nearly touched the ceiling. Jackie was stringing colored lights through its branches. He looked down and smiled. You're just in time to help me string these lights around the tree. I looked up and down the huge tree. I can't reach that high, I squeaked out. Jackie chuckled. Me either. That's why I have this ladder. You can still help. I'll wrap the lights around the top. You can string them around the bottom. Got it, I said, happy to have a part in making the tree sparkle. Together we wound the lights from top to bottom. Then we settled around the coffee table to drink hot chocolate and admire the tree. It's so big and pretty, I marveled. Had to get the biggest one on the lot, right, son? Jackie said proudly. Is your tree up yet, Steve? Oh, we don't have one. Steve, Rachel said, I have a special project for you and little Jackie that involves colored paper, scissors, and paste. Are you two ready to make something pretty on that, to put on that tree? Jackie Jr. and I clapped our hands and raced to the kitchen while Jackie carefully placed colorful bulbs on the branches of the tree. An hour later, we were laughing and stringing a paper wreath around the tree. When the tree was decorated, Rachel plugged in the lights and Jackie Jr. and I screamed with joy. It was the most beautiful tree I'd ever seen.